Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. Now this is a guitar I didn't think I'd get on the channel. Jake Bowen is one of the three guitarists in Periphery, and this is his signature seven string Ibanez. I've never been an Ibanez guy, but when I first saw the JBM 27 in person, I thought this might be the one to win me over. Well, long story short, I like and appreciate what they were going for, but I have no idea what the Ibanez QC department was thinking when they let this guitar out the door. Let's take a closer look. Now, I've been pretty public on this channel about the fact that I'm not an Ibanez guy. I don't like the super thin necks, the flat fingerboard radii, the pointy headstocks, the subjectively dull body shapes, and the needlessly complicated and unsexy naming schemes. However, I actually had really high hopes for this one. I mean, it looks really nice. It has a mahogany body and a nice carved maple top. The sides of the maple top are transparently stained, which acts as kind of a natural binding and looks really cool. I love that look. It's one of the same things that I really liked about the Chapman ML2 Pro Modern. It has a three-piece maple bolt-on neck, 26 and a half inch scale length, a rosewood fingerboard with a relatively flat 16 inch fingerboard radius and 24 jumbo frets. There's only a single small inlay at the 12th fret, which is like a crescent moon or a toenail clipping or something. It's definitely not a very ornate guitar. It's more something that's beautiful in its simplicity. The binding feels like it's been sanded off a bit too much from the second to the fourth fret. There's a sharp edge between the wood and the binding that doesn't affect playability, but it feels a little sloppy for a guitar in this price range. Other than that, it feels like a solidly put together instrument. For features, this guitar has an edge to floating tremolo and locking nut. I have... I'll get back to that in a second. It also has really classy looking gold goto tuners. I really like that design choice. Usually manufacturers try to match the tuner and bridge colors, but I think this guitar has enough black already and the gold looks really good. One particular design feature that I really like is the position of the output jack. 
It's angled upwards so the lead runs straight through the strap instead of looping around like it would if it had the traditional down angled jack. The set of DiMarzio Titan humbuckers the JBM27 comes with is one of my favorite things about this guitar. One, I mean, they look really cool. Aesthetically, these pickups mean business, and two, they sound kick-ass, especially for down-tuned, high-gain riffage. Here's what they sound like dirty through my PV6505+. Plus. And here's what they sound like clean through my Marshall DSL 100H. So the look and sound of the JBM27 are both awesome in my opinion, but the playability is where I started to run into problems. The first thing I noticed is the insane ringing from the springs. This guitar rings from the trem springs for about a full five seconds after you stop playing it. With the noise gate on, I couldn't hear it through the amp, but it's still incredibly distracting. In the end, I tied a bunch of hair ties to the springs to get it to stop. Now I don't expect a guitar outside of that three to four thousand dollar god tier range to be perfect right out of the box, but I expect a fourteen hundred dollar guitar to at least be playable. The LTD Kirk Hammett Ouija, the Epiphone Richie Faulkner Flying V, the Schecter KM7 FRS, all of them had Floyds, and while they needed minor adjustments, they were all playable. Okay, well the Schecter's bridge pickup fell out, but at least the Floyd was set up okay. This is the first guitar I've had on the channel that's been completely unplayable out of the box. The JBM27 is supposed to come from the factory set up in drop G sharp. When I got it, it was kind of G-sharp, but not really. Most of the strings were higher or lower by about a quarter step, some worse than others, nothing too crazy. 
besides the lowest string, which was somewhere between an F sharp and G. The fine tuner for that string was already screwed all the way down on the bridge, so that was the highest it could go. I figured I'd undo the locking nut and use the Goto locking tuners to get it to the right pitch. That's when I discovered Ibanez included every Allen wrench besides the one required to undo the locking nut. I've built IKEA furniture before, so I had the right tools lying around, but it was kind of like, really, Ibanez? Then as soon as I got the low G sharp to the right tuning, the bridge would pull forward, the string would go flat, and I was back to square one. Now standard procedure is to tighten the tension screws to compensate and pull the bridge back. However, when I opened up the trem cavity, I found the screws had already been tightened to their maximum, the plate was already screwed tightly, against the cavity wall. Usually they leave a little bit of wiggle room so you can tighten or loosen as need be, not here. So I thought, fine, I'll just add extra springs to increase the tension, except the JBM27 doesn't come with extra springs because of course it doesn't. So I was absolutely fed up at this point with the ringing and the bridge that wouldn't stop pulling forward. Luckily, I had extra springs lying around from another project, so I used those and I placed a few pieces of folded up paper between the rear wall of the cavity and the trem block to really lock it down. Once I did that, it was finally usable for playing. To be clear, this one came from the Sam Ash warehouse. They told me they get them directly from Ibanez, store it, and send it on to the customer without touching it. I've gotten a lot of guitars from that warehouse before, and none of them have been like this. So yeah, I'm not sure who let this JBM27 out of the factory as is, but to be honest, it's not a great look for Ibanez. If the tension screws are tightened all the way in and the fine tuner is all the way down, you know that's not right. If Epiphone could get it on a guitar 400 bucks less, I see no reason why this guitar should be completely unplayable out of the box. And even so, I mean, at least give me the tools and parts to fix it. Anyways, with the floating trem locked down, it was okay. I mean, it feels like an Ibanez 7 string should. Satin finished thin Wizard 2 neck shape with a flat-ish 16 inch fingerboard radius, very fast, comfortable, and familiar to modern seven string players. And now it's time for Simon Says. This is basically where we'll ask my roommate, who's kind of clueless about guitar, to give his opinion on the JBM 27. Simon, what do you think of this guitar? I like it. So oh. this guitar is the signature model of Jake Bowen from Periphery. Ooh, I don't know who he is. I, no. <laughs> I've heard of this brand before. It's like, a, it's like an Asian brand, right? Mm -hmm. It's a Japanese brand. This one was made in Indonesia. Oh. That's not good. What's wrong with Indonesia? Well, it's not Japan. If it was made in Japan, I'd be like cruelly living under. Uh, nothing, nothing against Indonesia. It's just, you know, if it was. Yeah, good save. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like the finish. It's like matte. You know, it's not glossy. I mean, black is always a nice color. Like, if you ever, like, stain it or, like, get some coffee on it, it would still be black. So, you can't. It's not like a white guitar or, like, a coffee colored guitar. It's not going to stain. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> I like the horns on these. So you got bigger bayonet from the last one. A little bluntier. <laughs> a bit more weapony. Yeah. It's like a little stick you can stick in the same one. Uh, but we won't, right, Simon? <laughs> no, of course not. It's got a really fat neck. Oh, because it has seven strings. Why does it have an extra string, Hunter? So the extra string is lower, so you can get more oh, brutal bass. Yeah, more brutal bass. Remember the white one that also had seven strings? Like would you pay more for this one or more for that one? When you play the white one, that's like your, your yang, and then this is like your yang, and you got one of each, and you, you, know, you can like have off days where you don't feel like you're black, and your like soul is like melting. So you play the white one, and you'll have like a little bit of balance. <laughs> I won't want them. An all white guitar, don't want a black guitar. Right, 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 right. Uh, but quality wise. <laughs> uh, I think. I don't know. There's only one knob. <laughs> so overall, how many thumbs would you give this guitar? If it was like a thousand, I would give it like a thumb and a half. But I would just give it one thumb because it's like kind of expensive. It's a Titan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. It's a Titan, all right. Overall, I did want to like this guitar. I like being pleasantly surprised, but that's not what happened. This guitar really disappointed me, and by that I mean this particular unit. As I said at the beginning, I actually had high hopes for this one. I quite like the look and the pickup sound phenomenal for the heavy stuff at stupidly low tunings. But I don't think this JBM27 should have been allowed to leave the Ibanez factory. I think the QC department should have caught this one before it was out the door. And that's the most upsetting thing about it. As a Les Paul guy, this was never going to be my type of guitar, but fans of Ibanez praise their quality and consistency, and that's not at all what I got. 
Like to me, this guitar kind of says that I should be really wary about buying Ibanez sight unseen, even those in the thousand dollar plus price range. That's not really a concern I have with brands like LTD or even Epiphone. The main positive I can take from my experience with this JBM27 is that I really want a set of DiMarzio Titans in one of my own seven strings. They have some chunky tone. It's actually pretty funny because as someone who doesn't really like Ibanez guitars to begin with, I would be the one to get the lemon. This guitar won't win me over to Team Ibanez, but I do plan on checking out the new AZ series, so maybe those Pacifica clones will. I mean, what are your thoughts? These are just my opinions. Am I being too harsh on Ibanez here? After all, it's only a sample size of one, but I just don't know how a guitar being sold at this price made it out of the factory without the ability to stay in tune at all. And moreover, they definitely knew there was something wrong with it because adjustments had already been made to the maximum. That's... I've never come across that with any other guitar. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to support what I do and get bonus extras like tabs, check out my Patreon. We actually reached the first funding goal, which gives me a little bit of a budget to work with and made this video happen. So I'd like to thank my patrons for making this and all the other videos possible. Nick McFarland, Michael Allen Dorman, James Parker, Reggie Dunlop, Christopher Miller, Dustin Luther, Michael Morales, Vince Fungham, Ceasing Rocks, Sean Carden, Sebastian Tarkington, Dante Inui, Russell Archer, Phil Crawford, Peter Bogdanoff, Joseph Hernandez, Gelvo, Adam Hinckley, Jim Gallant, Tim Jones, Douglas Bell, David Shabezda, George Dung, Rock On, Mark Massey, Crew, Jason Miller, Michael Del Corsano, Ricardo Bonama, Dannerman Shine, JP, Mitch Ford, L.A. Snyder, Corey J. Tevis, Walter, and Pavel Bogesh. You guys rock. Lastly, thanks to Sam Ash for making this guitar available and to Pad for being the mix master. Pricing, availability, all the links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome. This is the Ibanez Jake Bowen JBM 27, and I'll see you for the next video.